Hey guys, Darth Sebius here with another Sebius Speaks talking about my gaming week. Now, I feel a bit bad and I want to apologise that I haven't really been putting out much for Alice Index the last week. I've been having quite a lot of troubles uh, with my yeah physical and mental health and things have been a bit tricky. But there's still been some gaming, some stuff going on and some stuff to talk about and there's still things that I really want to be making more videos and doing more let's plays and stuff it's just balancing life and things and conditions and that's all fun games in itself so yeah let's get on with a little look at the week and things that have been going on uh, we had a, uh, an intro session to um, East Texas University on Monday uh, last Monday that was we set up our characters um, well I, I set my character with, with Toxic um, and we got some things planned. East Texas University sounds like it's going to be awesome. We had our first session properly today, uh, but that'll be something I'm talking about uh, next week. But I've been setting up, so, but just an idea of East Texas University. It's a Savage uh, Lands uh, roleplay uh, game. It was kickstarted and it's kind of got a Buffy meets Supernatural at University in East Texas. <laughs> basically is the kind of vibe um, and it's going to be rather Scooby gang investigating and trying to do stuff and finding, finding ways to sort out and deal with the supernatural rather than shoot it in the face with mass reactive shelves and then stab it and then punch it again uh, a bit more sneaky sneaky do the stuff and work stuff out which I'm really looking forward to um, even though normally I like to be bonk on the head, do the killy, take all the damage stuff. But I'm really looking forward to this and I did have a good fun session today. Uh, my character is uh, Tina Dinklage. Uh, she is kind of an amalgamation of uh, Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers, uh, Willow from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Velma from Scooby-Doo. Um, so she likes, she's, she's uh, majoring in biology, she likes horses, um, She's maybe going into uh, be doing equestrian studies at some point. Uh, she's into the occult, which is something she's been spending a lot of time uh, on chat rooms and on the internet looking into. Uh, she's kind of she's she's devout. She's not. I'm not quite decided what kind of uh, faith she she has. She's kind of maybe have a bit of paganism, or she's very interested in in the just generally the occult as a whole. Uh, she's a bit of an occultist, and that's kind of message boards and things of, and the weird happenings and whisperings are kind of the reason that have brought her all the way from Balmer <laughs> Baltimore um, <laughs> uh, to East Texas uh, and she plans to find some weird stuff study some biology and hopefully uh, chat with a few boys because the, the Tina Belcher and her is rather strong and she is a strong central woman um, who, yeah, likes horses, the occult, and, and boys, <laughs> and, and girls, she's, she's fairly open, um, so yeah, I look forward to talking a bit more of that, and playing a bit more of that, uh, but it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun, and a bit different to, well, very different, because we've been doing a lot of the 40k roleplays, which are awesome, very awesome, and we've still got Black Crusade to start, and, um, that's with the Allies Index group, and also, uh, Sarah and I are going to be starting Dark Heresy at some point. It's just difficult. That's with our Friday Night Magic, uh, some of the people from Friday Night Magic, because it's difficult with them being in the same place and organising stuff. But we have the books now, so characters will be made, and I will be talking about those at some point in the future. I also want to talk about roleplay stuff generally. I want to do some more, uh, so we speak, talking about some of the characters um, I've had over different systems and campaigns and the campaigns that I've destroyed because I've destroyed campaigns because I'm an awful person. I don't mean to but that just sort of happens. Um, so yeah that was Monday. Tuesday we had um, another uh, Toxic and Seb challenge uh, for the Allies Index title uh, which as as we all know after last week, uh, <laughs> after the first week of the um, Allies Index uh, NFL draft, uh, the fantasy football season uh, I was winning and I actually beat Toxic and I was very happy and had my picture with Garrick's axe and my crown and the Die Wizard Cup and all that good stuff. I say Die Wizard, it's the Tri Wizard Cup but we fill it with dice so therefore it's the Die Wizard Cup. Um, and so we had the next challenge and that was an EDH challenge. Um, basically I was playing Mind Seas with a few little alterations made. Um, no, was it? No, no, lots of alterations made because I, I kind of went rather heavily zombie. I decided to go on the zombie vibe. 
um, zombied up a little bit with the bits of bobs I had, um, and came up against his mimoplasm or mimeoplasm. People, there's lots of different pronunciations that people are throwing about. Mimoplasm is where I think I'm at. Um, which is it's, it's disgusting. I think uh, uh, Sean co- kind of called him out um, about it not being a real deck, and then Toxic put the most amazing Photoshop picture. Well, I I don't even think it's Photoshop. But I think it really happened of uh, Toxic in his onesie uh, sipping mojitos on an actual piece of decking with mimoplasm in a in a coconut b- bikini. So if you haven't seen that that is index, I do recommend trying to find it because it's a beautiful beautiful image. Uh, but mimoplasm is is evil, evil, evil. Comes in with the as is, is, is a copy of something in the graveyard with the strength and toughness of another thing in the graveyard, and in fact. So basically, it's gonna swing and kill you. If it can hit you, it's gonna kill you. And he kind of, yeah, took me apart in the first game. We had a bit more of a bit of game in the second game, but he won the two out of three already. We did play a third and fourth game. The third game, I managed to take off him. Woo! Um, fourth game again. He took, and it's just, yeah, it's fun. Lots of fun. Disgusting. Epic. Ridiculous. Uh, infect. Infect's terrifying. Um, infect's one of those things that you want to have in a game for EDH when there's lots of other people because everyone goes, ah, oh, that guy's got EDH. <laughs> that guy's got infect. We should stomp him quickly before anyone else can. <laughs> before, yeah, infect tokens go everywhere and the minus one, minus one counters. Um, but that was a lot of fun. Um, I picked up a bunch of cards, uh, did some epic trading at uh, Friday Night Magic for some more uh, zombie stuff, including the. Is it Plague Titan? The huge zombie, uh, huge giant guy with a ripped open stomach who's just belching out zombies uh, each turn, which is just awesome. Um, I'd never heard of it or seen it until uh, someone came to one of the PTQs um, at Cheap Thrills where we, we play Magic. And they had a they'd play mat of it, and I I fell in love with it instantly because for me, it's the ultimate <laughs> symbiosis of Magic the Gathering and Warhammer for me. I know it's all just Magic the Gathering, but it was so nerdly, it's ridiculous. It's basically a giant, giant, giant guy, essentially, almost like a giant ogre. Uh, yeah, spilling out zombies or plague bearers, whichever way you want to take it, and that's just awesome. Um, so yeah, lots of interesting new things to add to the EDH deck, so I will be looking forward to challenging Toxic again, see if I can get the crown back, but we, we shall see. Look forward to more EDH action uh, there. Uh, Wednesday we had the um, Minecraft challenge, which was a lot of fun again, and um, I don't want to, again, these videos, this, this, the first series of the Quick Time Blues videos are still coming out, and the challenges are coming later. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but Mr. Shadowstep and I, um, as kind of the the, the underdogs of of the uh, of the uh, the challengers, um, have kind of formed a coalition, uh, as it will, and we are Team Hopes and Dreams. <laughs> uh, he is Hopes and I am Dreams. Um, I will remind you that they actually built a grave, well, they dug a grave uh, in the, the Quick Time Blues town for my Hopes and Dreams because of how much I knew I am in the challenges. But that was a lot of fun, uh, and. Uh, Heartless did a very good job of creating a very interesting and crazy challenge. Um, yeah, and that was a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing that come out. Other than that, it's re- with like mostly been yeah having a bit of a mare uh, with with my my health and stuff as I said. So been back to the Hearthstone in bed, not really changing things, not really pulling anything interesting, just plowing plowing back to the depths, getting myself to 14 and 13, hopefully maybe pushing 12 one day, that would be a dream, Um, we should see, and oh, uh, over the 250 mark on the Hunter now, which is really exciting, Uh, hopefully, well, still quite a long way to go, um, but looking forward to having a gold Hunter at some point, which would be sweet. Um, other than that, lots of Destiny. Still playing Destiny a lot. Um, still plan to do a proper chat uh, with with Sarah. Uh, Getting sit in the silent back in effect and talk about that because we are both loving it ridiculously, and we seem to be falling into this very uh, stereotypical trap of the Destiny player. I've been talking to, to Toxic, and he's someone. He's he's got it. He thinks it's okay. He's got no problems with it. He just doesn't. This doesn't really interest him. Uh, it just doesn't grab him in in any real way, uh, and I just can't seem to explain why I enjoy it as much as I do. Um, 
I keep saying the combat's fun. I like rather the running around, jumping and shooting, and the way the hand cannons and guns feel rather meaty. But but it's very difficult to put my finger on exactly what it is. Um, and I think it's that element that you either either really enjoy or you really don't enjoy. And I think that's where the Marmite factor is coming in. And I'm very much on the side of yeah, loving it, but still not explaining why. As we said before, story is rather disappointing and short, but there's more stuff coming uh, as it comes, and I look forward to playing more and doing more. And I'm just, yeah, playing over the strikes, going through the playlist, doing things again, doing the bounties. I uh, need to play a bit more online, but still having ridiculous amounts of fun, just wishing there was a bit more of the story. But, yeah, that's one of those things. Friday Night Magic was the last, the last outing for my exacting exaction exactly um my ozov extort deck and uh, yeah did it right had i think it was two a draw one two drew one lost two sounds about right something like that which is not not bad i had a ridiculous game which basically lasted the entire round uh with ben uh which was just back and forth back and forth for ages just with us both getting ridiculous amount of stuff out but then the dream the dream for that deck was all three spheres of safety that I had in the deck out, meaning it's impossible to do damage to me, basically, because I had so many other enchantments out that it was just going to be impossible to swing. So that was good fun. Uh, a lot of fun, indeed. Um, so yeah, that was awesome. Uh, oh, and this weekend has been the weekend of the Khans of Tarkir uh, pre-release epicness. So we had Friday Night Magic on Friday, and then Saturday night we had a two headed giant event, um, and I chose Jeskai, uh, the blue, blue white red, or I'm not sure which order it's in, but blue, blue, the blue white red colour guys. Um, and so we're playing with Sarah, and she went for the Asban. I think she went for Asban on both days. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I was having a very difficult time uh, with my condition and. and my mental health so I wasn't in the best place but I had a rather awful day we got stuck with some very obnoxious players unfortunately um, some people were just more fun to play with than others and some people just sort of suck the fun out of life a little bit but like hey every sort of group has that <laughs> those few people um, and I think I was just in the mood to really not take that but unfortunately that and not feeling the Jeskai kind of mechanics and the way they were working really made me not feel Kanzataki in a bad in a big way. I really wasn't enjoying it for for the whole day to be honest. And the whole day was in fact so awful um that I came I was quite close to thinking about chucking it in with magic altogether. Uh, which is which was a real shame because it's something I love so much. Um, but then Saturday came along. We had Saturday morning, um, which was obscenely early. Sunday morning, sorry, uh, obscenely early. But the joys of the McMuffin early in the morning are always something to rouse the spirits. <laughs> but also to rouse the spirits, we had all the awesome people and just awesome fun. And I chose the Mardu this time and Mardu mechanics and warriors and bumping warriors and just ankle shanker the glorious guy 2-2 giving everything first strike and death touch is just insane i love him to bits uh pulled some great thing got some fetch lands got some goodness just really enjoyed the day had some really good matchups uh actually won some games uh, i think i went 2-3 got myself a booster oh and so so on the saturday sarah and i's two headed giant we went 05 <laughs> lost every single game and we got a uh, wooden spoon prize of a booster to share which is kind of lucky um and then we came home and drafted it sarah won the roll for the draft and uh pulled sorin markov which was at the time the only card in the entire set that i had any interest in so i was a little bit grumpy and rather upset about that but hopefully there's gonna be some trading for a journey and that would be maybe Soren will be mine one day. We shall see. So yeah, uh, on Sunday I uh, got a booster for my troubles and got a few bits and bobs in that. Had a really good day. Really feeling the mechanics of Mardu a lot more. And ended up coming straight home, sorting through cards, getting all the old things that have gone into a box, and then putting myself a very rough Mardu deck together, which I look forward to giving a play. Uh, but I still am very much looking forward to getting to into some serious uh, enchantment deck black white 
uh, with some uh, underworld coinsmiths and some grim guardians so I can pretend that I'm extorting even though extort doesn't exist anymore <laughs> uh, in standard that is um, because one of the things I do is I seem to play well I do, I don't seem, it happens I play, so basically it's set behind we don't, basically we go to pre-release events and a few, uh, maybe the odd draft or something over the course of uh, a set and that basically is all the, the cards we end up buying for that set so we trade and things happen and we get more cards that goes along so I end up playing a set behind that's why I was playing Orzov of for the end of Theros and I'll be basically playing stuff from the Theros block bolstered with stuff from the new Karnstark here which finally I'm now excited about after the Mardu and I look forward to seeing how my Mardu deck goes but just just a touch on the Karnstark here Morph I'm mm, I look forward to talking about this maybe another time in a bit more detail, but Morph is something I, is interesting, a little bit annoying, especially in Two in a Giant when you've got 12 Morphs on the table. Um, the Outlast is interesting, tapping down, getting a counter. It's a shame it's only at sorcery speed. It'd be great if you could be doing that at the end of each other's turns, but that might be a bit crazy. Um, but yeah good fun and but the three color thing so there's there's three color lands there's some three color guys there's obviously all the legendary creatures um of are the uh the cons of each tribe um that there are but that and the lands and the fact that the the dual lands are now um the life dual lands are, more, are now common um seems to be the only thing that really pushes you into three color um, I didn't really feel the massive need for three color, but then I think I was taking the three color thing wrong. I was thinking it like split it down the middle, like well, down into thirds. But the two color splash is, is good fun because I yeah. Saturday when I was not happy, I was playing three color kind of third ish kind of stuff going on, and then on Sunday we were having lots of fun when I went just two color black and white my main colors and then make okay four colors because I splashed for green because I had the the uh, black white green uh, Khan uh, who is awesome and then also splashed in red because I had an ankle biter and he's just so awesome um, so yeah that's kind of awesome and we actually it turned out uh, when we got back uh, Sarah and I did some good trading and it turns out we had each other's Khans and lots of cards for each other so epic trading has been epic and so yeah I look forward to putting I put even more zombies in the, my zombie EDH deck, which needs to be taken for a ride uh, and see how that goes. Um, I need to get my Mardu deck uh, tested, see how that goes, and then give that some fiddling. I need to get my enchantment deck s sorted out, and I also need to give my burn deck a bit of a fiddle because that's going to have some stuff uh, rotating as well. So. For, for a week where I've basically spent a lot of time in bed dying, uh, there's still been a fair decent amount of gaming. Um, I want to just apologise profusely. I think it's one of the weeks that's been the least kind of stuff I've actually posted up on Atlas Index. Um, just wanted to reassure you that Service Speaks isn't finished. Uh, I am going to be continuing to do these and talking about more stuff. I listened to uh, Mark of Sentia, the Nick Kaim, uh, Ultramarines, Kalf, Horace Heresy audio drama which I'll be talking about and reviewing at some point uh, it's awesome that's a quick brief <laughs> review um, and I just have lots of things that I want to be doing it's just I'm having yeah serious up uppity downity time with my chronic fatigue and other bits and bobs so stuff's coming um, and there is still people are still posting stuff other people have been busy uh, as Lewis vegan wargamer has been got some awesome goblin hut stuff up on there and his new stegadon which looks kind of awesome and i know boris has been posting his infinity slow grow stuff and toxic and that has been posting the quick time blues um first series and the gifts and stuff of that and there's yeah other stuff going on so um i hopefully will be adding to more of that good stuff that's going on soon um it's just balancing time and life and all that good stuff but thank you for taking time to watch the stuff and i know there's a few of you that have been watching and uh enjoying these and you've said some nice things so thank you very much to you guys but yeah i've been rounding for a while so i'll wrap this up i am darth sebius this has been sebius speaks my gaming week uh for allies index uh, a place for all things geeky gaming that's alliesindex.com uh, we are based on Tumblr, best place to get hold of us, uh, or if you want to share anything with us or want to get involved with us, get in touch with us on Tumblr. But we are on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube as well, so check us out there. And we've got video games, card games, board games, tabletop, 
miss games, fantasy football, all that sort of stuff. Anything, if it's geek gaming, we're trying to in some way show it off and, and do it role play, all that good stuff. Um, and if you want to get involved and you want to do a, have a regular kind of piece or something that's going on there, please in, please do get involved and get in touch and we will get you on there. But once again, I'm Star Sebius and I'll catch you guys later. Tatted bye.